So the merits of complementary therapy in Parkinson's are several fold. Um, they actually provide uh, patients with several alternatives to taking medications, and a lot of patients are already taking 5, 10, 15 medications. All the medications have side effects, uh, particularly for non-motor symptoms, things like sleep, uh, pain, anxiety. Uh, complementary therapies may provide a nice alternative to adding to the growing list of medications. The evidence for complementary therapies really depends on the therapy. For some, such as Tai Chi, there's very good randomized controlled trials that show that it helps people with their balance, with their quality of life. Um, for other therapies, there's good evidence against it. So there's no evidence, for instance, that vitamin E or coenzyme Q10 has any benefit for Parkinson's. And the majority of therapies, there's some evidence, but it's not very conclusive. So for instance, acupuncture, mindfulness meditation, yoga, dance, uh, there's uh, good evidence supporting it, but they haven't been tested very well in rigorous trials. Uh, that being said, as long as the therapy is safe, um, I usually encourage patients to go ahead and try it. So people can achieve a lot of benefit. There's actually maybe two groups of uh, alternative practices. So one would be what I would call body-based, um, and that would include things uh, such as yoga and dance and uh, we know very well that exercise is very important for Parkinson's, and so if there's a particular type of exercise that you like, uh, such as dancing, uh, there may be added benefits, and it's always great to do something that you enjoy doing because you can form a good habit of it. Um, there are some uh, therapies like Tai Chi and yoga where it's a mix of breath work, mental work, um, and body work. And those ones, again, seem to be uh, very helpful. And in the case of Tai Chi, there's very good evidence supporting it and that it may actually be more helpful than regular physical therapy. And then the last group uh, would be more mental and spiritual exercises, so things like prayer and meditation. And these haven't been well studied, uh, but I think I feel and many people in the community feel that they are very helpful for patients in terms of coping, in terms of feeling grounded in their lives. And it's something that I would encourage people to try to get into a practice even for a month and see what benefits it has on their life. And all of these practices are extremely safe. So symptoms that can be addressed through complementary therapies um, would include uh, things like balance, uh, range of motion, and those could be addressed with things such as yoga and Tai Chi. Um, mental aspects of Parkinson's, uh, things like sleep and anxiety, um, even depression and grief can be helped by alternative therapies such as meditation, mindfulness, uh, prayer, um, sometimes gentle teas. And then there's a whole host of other things such as acupuncture, Reiki, massage, uh, that people oftentimes find helpful for uh, other symptoms such as pain. Uh, so there are certainly some downsides and dangers with complementary therapies. Um, uh, one of the biggest is that uh, complementary therapies, for the most part, are not very well studied and they're unregulated. And so there's actually um, uh, quite a lot of stink happening in New York uh, where the uh, state attorney general is looking into supplements and that a lot of the supplements really do not contain any of the ingredients that are claimed to be there on the bottle. Um, so for a lot of uh, supplements and uh, nutraceuticals, it's kind of buyer beware. And so people can lose a lot of money buying nothing that, other than placebo. Um, there are certainly other dangers, for instance, with chiropractic. Uh, people have had neck injuries. So if you're working with the chiropractor, you need to be careful around the neck, work with somebody who's experienced. Um, there's people who are promoting stem cell treatments for Parkinson's disease. And stem cell treatments outside of research protocols, I really strongly recommend people stay away from. Uh, these treatments can cost tens of thousands of dollars. Um, they're completely unregulated. It's not known where the cells come from. And there actually have been cases of cancer that have come up because of these therapies. Um, the last thing to note is for a lot of the uh, supplements that people will take or other alternative treatments or herbal treatments, that these do have a potential to interact with me medications. And so it's important that if people are taking herbal treatments that they talk about them with their doctor or pharmacist to make sure there's not drug-herb interactions. There actually has been um, some research on marijuana or cannabis with Parkinson's disease. There's actually quite a lot of uh, research that has been done in animal models of Parkinson's. And those research actually have mixed findings. Uh, some suggest that it may be helpful and some not. And one of the things to recognize with this research is that marijuana or cannabis is a very complex plant. And there are over 65 uh, known pharmacoactive chemicals in cannabis. 
And so a lot of the research studies are isolating one or two of these compounds, and that may be very different than using the whole plant. Uh, there have been about 10 or 15 studies in people. Um, the ones that were not controlled, so just anecdotal evidence suggested that they may be helpful, and we actually published a paper that suggests that it may be helpful for some non-motor symptoms, things like anxiety and sleep and pain, but the majority of studies that have looked at motor symptoms, such as tremor, stiffness, and dyskinesias, have been negative studies. Uh, that being said, um, there's a range of doses, there's a range of chemicals in marijuana, and so there's a lot of further research that needs to be done. Uh, the other thing that's really important to know for people who are interested in trying it is that marijuana has side effects. Uh, not surprisingly, it can make people feel dopey, uh, but it can also cause low blood pressure, dizziness, and falls. And so just like any other medication, people need to start with a low dose and they need to be very careful when they try to add marijuana to their regimen of treatments. For people living outside of the state of Colorado, and I guess outside of Washington, California, I think New York, there may be a few other states that have uh, medical marijuana available. Um, uh, there are um, uh, pharmaceuticals that contain cannabinoids uh, that are being marketed. So Marinol is the most common of these. And so there is possible to access some of these same chemicals. It may be different than using the whole plant. And again, the research right now is pretty preliminary. Um, so it doesn't look like, even in, in the state of Colorado, when we did a survey of over 200 people, less than 5% were using uh, medical marijuana, and several people have tried it, and overall, with the exception of some non-motor symptoms, it really hasn't been a game changer in terms of people managing their Parkinson's. Um, so the potential side effects or downsides to using medical marijuana or cannabis, um, one thing uh, which I do emphasize with my patients is I generally discourage people from smoking uh, marijuana just because there is a potential risk of lung cancer and lung problems. Um, secondly, the two most common side effects are um, lightheadedness or dizziness and people can have falls because of it. People can also uh, be dopey or drowsy uh, with uh, cannabis, so that's not too surprising. Depending on the symptoms that people have, there are, at least in Colorado, creams and patches available. And a lot of times people have found those to be very helpful for pain and spasticity without getting the systemic side effects. So when it comes to brain exercise and thinking and memory, um, there's a lot of uh, things that are out on the internet. And what most of the studies show is that it really doesn't matter so much the exact type of mental exercise that you do. Um, so whether it's crossword puzzles or Sudoku or playing Scrabble or le learning a musical instrument, um, as long as you're keeping your brain active, that's the main thing that's important. And I usually encourage people to find something that they really find fun. Um, and that they're going to find uh, that they're looking forward to do on a day-to-day -day basis. So if you hate crossword puzzles and you love Scrabble, then Scrabble is going to be a much better choice for you. But there's no magical uh, brain exercise, but it is important to do something to stay mentally stimulated.